At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify information gain, follow the step-by-step -step process of calculating information gain, and appreciate the use of information gain in the decision tree algorithm. So in our last lesson, we talked about continuous target variable, and we had a deeper understanding of how we use reduction in variance. This time, we're going to talk about categorical target variable, and we actually have three techniques on how to split the data. So we have information gain, Gini impunity, then we do have chi-square. But as of this moment, we will just focus on information gain. And in our next lesson, of course, we will have Gini impunity, and of course, we will have chi-square. So we're going to have them one by one so that we would be able to properly digest and understand each one of them. So what is information gain? Information gain actually calculates the reduction in entropy. So if you're going to ask me about entropy, it's actually about an information transferred from parent to a child. So in our lesson in Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm, we actually have a deeper understanding on entropy. And for you to be able to understand information gain, you must have a clearer and deeper understanding of entropy. So I suggest you go back to that lesson in Machine Learning Essentials so that you would be able to understand more about information gain. Another thing about information gain is that it evaluates the information gain. So for example, we do have here our decision tree, and this is our parent node, and then we do have here our child node, one child, second child. So when we say evaluation, it actually answers the question how much information is being transferred from the parent going to the child. So when the information is higher, then that means a certain child that has a maximum amount of information has a better chance of being considered for our splitting. And the other one, because it does not carry much information that is needed for our study, then it can be disregarded. And now the question is this, how are we going to compute for an information gain? So we have here a formula that tells us and teaches us how to calculate the information gain. So we have 1 minus entropy. For better understanding of what an entropy is, I have actually written here the formula of the entropy because we actually need this for us to be able to later on make the calculation of the different information or the different variables or features. So entropy is equal to minus the summation of pi log base 2 pi. So pi here is actually the probability and we will have that one later on of course. What does this mean? So it means that when the entropy is higher then the purity is lower and when the entropy is lower then the purity is higher so if you're going to examine the relationship between these two then we could say that there is an inverse relationship so when the one is increasing the other one is decreasing and vice versa just like your reduction in variance when our entropy is zero it means that we have a perfect homogeneous node and as you could see in this case, we have deducted the entropy from 1. And because this is so, then the information gain is higher for the purer nodes with a maximum value of 1. So for better understanding of our lesson, we're going to go to this one. So actually, we have used the same problem as before in our lesson about a reduction in variance. And in this case, what we do here is that we're going to identify what kind of weather condition we will have based on two features. We have the temperature and we do have the humidity. What we will do is we are going to identify which between them, temperature and humidity, can give us the lower entropy. So it can be used for splitting and the results, of course, would be used for identifying what kind of weather we will be having. Would it be a fair weather? Would it be a bad weather? Again, in this case, we are considering 30 days. 
and the probability of hot days is 0.67 and the probability of cold is 0.33 and i believe as of this moment i would not teach you how to get 0.67 and 0.33 because this is very much basic when we talk about probability and if you are new to this lesson i would like you to go back to machine learning essentials because this course contains the basic foundational concepts and skills for the different machine learning algorithms all right so again here we have hot is 20 days and hot is represented by one and cold days is 10 and it is represented by zero and then we have classified this parent node into two the hot and the cold and we have these results for the hot and this is for the cold we get here the probability of each temperature hot and cold for this node so for the hot it is 0.9 and for the cold is 0.1 and in this case we have 10 days and each of them has its probability so for the hot days we do have 0.2 and for the cold days, we have 0.8. So the mean and the variance here are actually very necessary if we are computing for the reduction in variance, which we had in our last lesson. So for information gain, what matters most is the probability. Don't forget the 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, and of course 0 0.67 and 0.33. So we're going to have them one by one. The first step that we will do is that we're going to get the entropy of the parent node. And remember this formula, the formula of the entropy. So what we will do is we are now going to plug in the different values of the probabilities of our parent node. So this is 0 0.33 and 0 0.67. So these values are now plugged in in our formula. and we get this result so the entropy of the parent node is 0.921 let's go to the children's node we will have first the hot node and then later on we will have the cold node so the same case we are going to plug in these values in our formula and so we do have the result which is 0.47 and for the entropy for our cold node, and again, we are going to plug in these values 0.2 and 0.8 in our formula. And so we get 0 0.72. And as of this moment, I do believe that you already know how to get the log base 2 of a certain number. If you haven't yet studied how to do that, let's make a review. It's just actually very easy. And there are actually a lot of tutorials and lessons online that you can find for you to be able to understand how to do this. So after getting the entropies of these different nodes, now what we will do is that we're going to get the weighted entropy of the hot node and the cold node. So we have 20 over 30. So maybe you would ask me, where did we get this 20 over 30? So this is here because we have here 20 days for the hot and then the 10 here is the 10 days for the cold node and all in all we get 30 days that's why the denominator here is 30 and so we have 20 over 30 times 0.47 for this entropy of the hot node and 0.72 for the entropy of the cold node and doing the different processes then we get 0 0.55. That means for the temperature node or the split on the temperature, we have 0 0.55 entropy. And maybe you would like to ask me, why is it that we get the entropy of the parent node and we could not see that this 0.921 is used in the entropy for the hot node, the cold node, and even in the weighted entropy. Now, this is the importance of this one. We have to get this one because we need to make comparisons between the parent node and the weighted entropy. It means that when the entropy of our child nodes is lower 
than the entropy of our parent node, then we can say that we have fewer node than our parent node. So that's the reason why we have to get the entropy of our parent node for us to be able to make comparison and we could identify whether or not this child node is fewer than the parent node because when it is the other way around then I believe that we must not go any further it's because we can never get any better results because our child node is impure so now let's go to the split on humidity and as you could see this is still the same data or situation that we have in our lesson reduction in variance and again we have here 30 days and out of 30 days 16 are high humidity and 14 are low humidity and the probability of high humidity is 0.53 and the probability of low humidity is 0.47 and so we've split this parent node and then we have this high node and then we have the low node so for this case we have 16 days and for the high humidity we have 12 days and for the low humidity we have 4 and the probability of high is 0.75 the probability of low is 0.25 and so in this case we have 14 days and the probability of high is 0.29 because we only have four days and that of low is 0.71 because we have 10 days and as you could see we still have the here the mean and the variance and these things are very much important if we are talking about reduction in variance so we use these different results now we will go to our calculation and of course we first have the entropy of a parent node which is the same as the split on temperature. The value as stated is 0.921 so we have plugged in the different values 0.75 and 0.25 in our formula and so we get 0.81 and for the entropy of the low node we have plugged in the values of the probabilities of high and low 0.29 and 0.721 in the formula and so we get 0 0.87 now we are going to make the weighted entropy of the high node and the low node so 1630 times 0 0.81 plus 1430 times 0 0.87 and this we get 0 0.84 so in comparison to 0 0.8 9 to 1 0 0.84 is still lower so that we can say that these child nodes are fewer than our parent node so the story does not end in theirs because we still have to make comparison between the split on humidity and the split on temperature so that we would be able to identify which one is better for splitting but then again we have to remember that our formula is 1 minus entropy so that means each of the values 0 0.84 and 0 0.55 must be deducted from 1 and with that the information gain for the temperature variable is 0 0.45 and the information gain for humidity is 0 0.16 so as you could see between the temperature and humidity the entropy of temperature is lower than humidity and because it is lower it means that it carries more information and 0.45 is higher than 0.16 so based on this result now we can say that we're going to use the variable temperature for the splitting what is this for why do we have to study this Basically, this method of splitting strategy can help us identify which feature to use for splitting in classification problems of a decision tree algorithm. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is information gain? How do we identify which node to split using information gain? Please write your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction of ideas and we can learn from each other. Do you want to know more about this channel? Let's click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like Machine Learning Essentials, 
deep learning mathematics and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.